Hi everyone, and welcome to Shukin Science. In this video, we're gonna talk about the chemical structure of a DNA molecule. Now, as you probably already know, DNA is found inside the nucleus of every single one of our cells. And it tends to have this double helical structure, kind of like a ladder that has been twisted. What we're gonna do is zoom way in to that on a molecular level to understand exactly how some of these molecules come together to make that double-stranded helix. So starting first with this alternating sugar phosphate backbone. DNA molecules are held together like the sides of a ladder by sugars, which are a deoxyribose sugar, and phosphate molecules. And what you're gonna notice about the way that the sugars are oriented is that in one strand of the molecule, the tip of those pentose sugars is facing upwards, whereas on the other side of the molecule, the tip of the pentose is towards the bottom. Now, the reason why one faces this way and the other faces downwards is because DNA is said to be anti-parallel. They have opposite directionalities. And we can actually go ahead and label the directionality of each of these strands depending on which carbon the phosphate molecules bind to. So in order to label the carbons, I'm going to have to maybe remind you of some organic chemistry. So in this pentose sugar, the tip is actually an oxygen molecule, whereas any other place where two lines intersect is assumed to be a carbon. So here would be a carbon, as well as here, here, and here. Now, deoxyribose is actually a five carbon sugar. However, the fifth carbon is not in the ring. It is actually out here on a branch. So there's a branch that extends from this carbon here. And so this is actually where we're going to find that final carbon in the pentose sugar. And the way that we number these carbons is always starting from the oxygen going in a clockwise direction. So here is carbon one, here is carbon two, here's carbon three, carbon four, and like I said, the fifth carbon is out here on the branch. So on this side of the DNA molecule, the first phosphate group is bonded to carbon five on the first sugar molecule. The next phosphate group is going to form a bond with carbon three of that same sugar molecule. And then the pattern is going to repeat as we go from sugar to sugar. So again, here is carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, and then out here on a branch, we have carbon five. So this phosphate is first bonded to carbon five of the next sugar, and this phosphate is then bonded to carbon one, two, three of the next sugar. And like I said, that pattern continues to repeat. So what we see here is an alternating pattern where each phosphate is attached to either carbon five or carbon three, and then carbon five, and then carbon three, and so on and so on. So we would label the directionality of this side of the strand as five prime, because that's the first carbon it attaches to, to three prime, because that's the next carbon it attaches to. And the same pattern makes its way down the entirety of that strand. Now, because this pentose sugar is upside down on the other strand, then we see actually the opposite directionality. So again, starting from the oxygen, here is going to be carbon one, here is going to be carbon two, here's carbon three, here's carbon four, and then our branch is where we're going to find carbon five. And so the directionality of this strand is the exact opposite because this first phosphate group, it is bonded to the first sugar 
through C3. And this phosphate group is bonded to that same sugar by C5. And then again, we can go ahead and see that pattern continues. Here's carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, that bonds, carbon four, and then on our branch, carbon five, and that's where that bond is found. So because we have a three to five, three to five, three to five pattern, we say the directionality of this strand is three prime to five prime. So that's what it means when it says the DNA molecule is anti-parallel. It means that the directionality of one side of the molecule is exactly opposite of the directionality of the other side of the molecule. So that explains how the backbone of the molecule is arranged. We have an alternating sugar phosphate backbone. That sugar again is a deoxyribose sugar and each side is anti-parallel to one another. And then the part that links the two strands together are like the rungs of the ladder. These are the nitrogenous bases of the DNA molecule, and they are held together by hydrogen bonds, which makes DNA molecules relatively strong. Now, there are four types of nitrogenous bases that make up the DNA molecule, and they can be found in any order. We have adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine, and each of them have slightly different molecular structures. I didn't actually draw out the full molecular structure here. In most diagrams, they just show them as a series of interlocking shapes. And what's important to know is that adenine will always bond with thymine, and they do so using a double bond whereas guanine will always bond with cytosine, and they do so using a triple bond. And so they always arrange themselves into these complementary base pairs. A always bonds with T, and C always bonds with G. So let's say I didn't know what this nitrogenous base was. As long as I know that this is the thymine, I should actually be able to fill this in and say, oh, well, that must be an adenine or an A because those two bases always bond together. And that's it, that's the DNA molecule. We have these four rules that kind of determine how the molecule is arranged. And due to the, the molecular bonding that we see here, not only does it create this double-stranded molecule, it causes it to curl around itself and form a helix. Okay. One last um, piece of terminology that you might be asked about. We should also be able to identify that each pair of three, so a phosphate group, a sugar group, and a nitrogenous base, that grouping there is referred to as a nucleotide. So sometimes you'll hear people say that nucleotides are the building blocks of DNA. So in this molecule that I've drawn here, on this side, I have one, two, three nucleotides. And then on this side here, I have one, two, three nucleotides as well. So this DNA molecule in total consists of six nucleotides, which come together to create that molecular structure. Thanks everyone.